I want to start with a little listening exercise. So uh, I'm just going to have you sing what I sing back to me. Uh, pretty simple, all in the same note, sort of. Then Sante Spiritus. Then Sante Spiritus. Try that. Then Sante Spiritus. Then Sante Spiritus. There's more of you than me. Sing louder. Then Sante Spiritus. Then Sante Spirit, I'm going to listen to you keep singing. Keep singing. We'll sing against you. Then the song to spiritus. 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 Softer. Then the song to spiritus. Then the song to spiritus. Then the song to spiritus. From my very earliest years of consciousness as a child, I have sung. I have been a part of a family that sings. In school, I sang. In high school, I really sang, learning music theory and all these things, singing in contemporary groups and Gregorian groups. The one thing that's so important about singing, whether you are individual, but especially if you're a part of a congregation or a choir, is we have to listen. We have to listen. Because if you don't listen when you sing, no matter how great a singer you are, it's like you're having a concert on your own and the choir is, is left behind. Or have you ever had a situation where maybe there's a, my dad used to always do this in church, my dad could not sing, but he loved singing, so he would sing super loud, so you hear my dad's voice above everything. It's great to sing. Augustine said to sing is to pray twice. But if you're going to sing and be a part of a choir, we have to listen, right? Some of us read music easily. Some of us are, are good through the ear. We have to listen to one another if it's going to sound good. We have to know when to get loud, when to get soft, when to blend. It is such an important lesson that has always been a part of my life. And yet, what a wonderful lesson that has been for me personally, because isn't that the whole question of synodality? Synodality is all about learning how to listen. That's what's happening in Rome now. People from all over the world, bishops, priests, deacons, lay people, Catholics, non-Catholics, all over the world, listening through a series of very important questions that face our world. Now the, now, the Senate is not the same as a Vatican Council. You're not deciding things like this. The purpose of the Senate is to listen and to learn how to listen. So I ask you, is listening easy? No, right? Listening to people you like is easy, right? To music that you like. I hear sometimes students say, oh, Father, you know, my roommate is driving me crazy because he or she plays that music all the time. I don't like that music. But have we ever listened to the music? Today's readings are all about what can happen when we really listen. In the first reading, it's a very interesting reading. The people, the Israelite people are in captivity, the Babylonian captivity. They're stuck. But all of a sudden, God calls Cyrus. And Cyrus is not a king of the Israelites. Cyrus is Persian. And it would have been very easy for Cyrus, as the people were, who were already in captivity, for Cyrus to sort of impose more difficulty than the people had already experienced. But God spoke to Cyrus. And Cyrus listened. That's what the first reading is all about. Cyrus listened, and the people were freed, given their freedom again. 
If we don't listen, struggle to listen, we can't hear what God is trying to tell us. What's happening in today's gospel reading? So it says that in order to entrap him, they ask him a question. So are they really about searching for truth? No, they're trying to entrap him. And that's what they already knew. They thought they knew what the answer was. They were trying to, say, to get Jesus to say, don't pay the tax because the Roman army and people are, are unjust, terrible people. Don't pay the tax. But what does Jesus do? He listens to the question. And because he listened deeply to the question, wasn't he able to answer that question? But first he says, why are you trying to entrap me? And then he says, show me the coin. And he listens to the situation, and he answers correctly. Pay your tax. That's a part of the order. But then he says part two, that they were not expecting. But to God, pay to God what is owed. What is owed? We, the choir did a beautiful job singing what is owed. What is owed to God is that every day of our life, people of God, we have to love God with all of ourselves, heart, mind, soul, and strength. I don't know about you, but some of us like to choose, right? It's easier to love God with our minds sometimes, right? And that's beautiful. Or our hearts only. But God says all of it. Because when we love with heart, soul, mind, and strength, the truth that is God is put out there in the world. And we can be true followers of Jesus Christ. And that's the purpose of this synod in Rome. So many people say, oh, Pope Francis, he's a radical. He's not a radical. The man is just trying to follow the gospel. He's trying to listen to the church. Throughout the centuries, the wisdom of the church, in theology, in scripture, in tradition, that's what he's trying to do in the Holy Spirit so that we can respond to the needs of our world. And it's a sad thing in relationships when we don't listen, right? It's a very sad thing. Because, because when we don't listen, what happens to our relationships? They fail. Oh, I was upset with you for months because I thought you said that. Well, did you listen? The call of the gospel people of God is that we have to listen even through the difficulties. Because God calls us to comfortable things to do sometimes, but God also calls us to reconciliation. I don't know about you, but reconciliation takes a lot of listening, especially when pain has been imposed. Now, when you're hurting, is it easy to listen? No, it's not. It is easy to entrench when we're hurting. But the readings today are calling us to the power of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Did you hear that in the second reading? The Spirit speaks with power. And that's why we have to call upon the Holy Spirit in our conflicts with one another. Whether it's with family, or company, or roommates, or society, or nation. The conflict in Israel and Palestine, that's been going on forever. But isn't it always heartbreaking when you hear a new iteration of it? It's heartbreaking. And so oftentimes, why is that the case? Because we entrench and we can't listen. My time away was incredible. 22 days. First four to six days, I was relaxing my body. Because I read a stat once that it takes between four and six days to physically relax. And then between nine, seven, and nine, then to psychologically relax. That's why they say oftentimes, if you can get away for two weeks, you can really be open and rediscover your why. And it was great for me to get away and to really be open and to rediscover my why, why God called me, and to be able to celebrate yes again to the Lord. That's a good thing. It was a wonderful time. And the book that I used as my retreat master was a book written by Timothy Radcliffe, former master of the Dominican order, called Questioning God. And it was a book that took 18 questions in Scripture, Old Testament, Gospel, and New Testament, where God was asking people questions. And one of the questions that was in it, it was great. So, the, of course, Adam and Eve was a question. So Adam and Eve bite the apple, and then God asked Adam a question. Where are you? And it's so easy for us sometimes in life to say, oh, well, God was upset and he was looking. No, God knew where they were, but he was asking a deeper question. You have this new awareness and you're overwhelmed with new knowledge. Where are you? 
We have to ask that question of ourselves when we're overwhelmed. Where am I? Because if we don't ask that question, what do we do? We just go through life reacting. Where am I? Where am I today? Where am I with this decision to um, go on for further studies? Where am I with this decision to marry this person? Where am I with this decision to become Catholic? Where am I with this decision when I am struggling with being Catholic or whatever? We have to ask that question and hear God asking the same question to us. Where are we? And we have to answer it. Our God wants to hear where we are so that our God can support us. Another question was the question that God asked Cain after he killed Abel. Why did Cain kill Abel? Jealousy. And what happened? Two, two offerings are being sent up, and all of a sudden God's, God recognizes both offerings, but, but God looks with favor upon Abel's. And we can say, well, that was kind of unfair. If we are jealous people and not grounded people, jealousy gets the best of us. We stop listening, and we cannot investigate if there's a deeper reason why. Another question that was asked, which I thought was great, was the whole dialogue between Jesus and Pilate. A lot of time is spent on that in the book. Especially when Pilate says, truth, what does that mean? He asked a question, but he didn't let himself sit with the question. Do we ever ask that question in our own struggles of life? Truth. God, you're calling me to truth. What does that mean? What type of journey does that mean? Prepare me for that journey. To be alive and to be a follower of Christ means to be willing to listen to the questions that God asks us. My time away took me to San Diego. You guessed it for the, for, for the beginning, first six days, relaxing then to Northern California, Bodega Bay, for the next week, then to Fairbanks, Alaska. Now, that was kind of not planned, but one of our Dominican brothers, a very close friend of mine, who has been pastor of our parish in Anchorage, Alaska, two and a half months ago, the Apostolic Nuncio called him on the phone. The Apostolic Nuncio is the Pope's representative in a country. Called him on the phone. Now, of course, you can just imagine he was freaking out. Well, why is the apostolic nuncio calling me? Who am I? And his worst fear came. The apostolic nuncio said to him, Father Mayakawa, we need a new bishop in Fairbanks, Alaska. Now, if you've been to Anchorage, Alaska, that's far enough away. But Fairbanks is even further away. And when you look at the state of Alaska, the Diocese of Juneau and Anchorage is the lower third. The Diocese of Fairbank is the upper two-thirds, including the Arctic Circle. In Steve's parish, there are 48 parishes. And eight of those parishes are what we think about when we think about a parish. The other 40 parishes are in these outposts that can only be reached by boat, small plane, or snowmobile. That is going to be a part of his ministry. And yet when he was asked this question, which absolutely blew him away and stunned him, and when his fear jumped up and he wasn't able to listen, he breathed and he prayed and he trusted. He told me, he said that the Apostolic Nuncio asked him three times, he said, and he froze. He said, and the nuncio kept saying, are you still there? Three times. A conversation that should have maybe taken 20 minutes took about 40 minutes because he kept freezing at the severity of the question. But he said, I finally stopped and I finally breathed and I finally took time to listen. I was afraid, yes. But when I listened, I could also hear the voice of God calling me to this position and saying, I will be with you always. What's the lesson for us people of God in all this? What questions do you have in your mind today? What fears do you have in your mind today? And what is God asking you today? Can you hear the voice of God when God is calling you? So oftentimes when we get upset or entrenched or we've been hurt, we can't hear anything but our pain. And the voice of God keeps knocking upon the door of our heart because that's who God is, saying, come home, 
I am with you. And because I'm with you, I'm going to help you navigate whatever the situation is. But your job and my job is we have to keep listening. Even when we don't want to, we have to keep listening. So here's the homework. What are two things in your life that you are not listening to, that are always there, and that are true, and that you need to address? What are two things in your life that are true, God keeps bringing them back to you, that you are not listening to? I want you to take some time this week, over the next couple of weeks, to open the door a little bit and to ask the Holy Spirit, through the grace of this Eucharist, to help you to listen but also to help you to hear the voice of God that is also going to accompany you as you listen. When you and I can do that, then we can announce good news. If we can't, then we're we're always distracted. Let's not be distracted because God is calling you and God is calling me to freedom, to love him with all that we are. Let's ask for the courage to the spiritual food of the Eucharist, to receive him, in words, sacrament, and community, so we might listen to him and follow him. Amen.